The old woman led the boy to a room at the back of her house. It was separated from her living room by a curtain of colored bread. The room's furnishing consisted of a table and image of the sacred heart of Jesus and two chairs. The woman sat down and told him to be seated as well. Then she took both of his hands in hers and began quietly to pray. It sounded like a graspy prayer. The boy had already had experience on the road with Gaspiaris. They also traveled, but they had no flocks of sheep. People said that grapes fish spend their lives tricking other. It was also said that they had a pact with the devil and that they kidnapped children and taking them away to their mysterious camp. They made them their shelves. As a child, the boy had always been frightened to death that he would be captured by grapsishes. And this childhood fear returned when the old woman took his hand in hers. But she has the secret heart of Jesus there, he thought, trying to reassure himself. He didn't want his hand to begin trembling, showing the old woman that he was Fearful, he recited and our father silently. Very interesting, said the woman, never taking her eyes from the boy's hand, and she fell silent. The boy was becoming nervous, his hands began to tremble and the woman sensed it. He quickly pulled his hand away. I didn't come here to have you read my plan, he said, already regretting having come. He thought for a moment that it would be better to pay her fee and live without learning a thing, that he was giving too much importance to his recurrent dream. You can show that you could learn about your dreams, said the old woman, and dreams are the language of God. When he speaks in our language, I can interrupt what he has said. But if he speaks in the language of the soul, it is only you who can understand. But whatever it is, I am going to charge you for the consultation. Another trick, the boy thought. But he decided to take a chance. A sheep had always take his chances. With wolves and with drought. And that's what makes a sheep yard life exciting. I have had the same dream twice. He said, I dreamed that I was in a field with my sheep. When a child appeared and began to play with the animals. 
I don't like people to do that because the ships are afraid of strangers. But children always seem to be able to play with them without frightening them. I don't know the reason why. I don't know how animals know the age of human being. Tell me more about your dream, said the woman. I have to get back to my cooking, and since you don't have much money, I can give you a lot of time. The child went on playing with my ship for a quite a while, continued the boy a bit upset, and suddenly the child took me by both hands and transported me to the Egyptian pyramids. He paused for a moment to see if the woman knew what the Egyptian pyramids were, but she said nothing. Then at the Egyptian pyramids, he said the last three words slowly. So that the old woman would understand. The child said to me, If you come here, you will find a hidden treasure. And just as she was about to show me the exact location, I wake up both times. The Old woman was silent for some time. Then she again took his hands and studied them carefully. I'm not going to charge you anything now, she said, but I want one tenth of the treasure if you find it. The boy laughed out of happiness. He was going to be able to save the little money he had be cause of a dream about hidden treasure. Well, interrupt the dream, he said. First, show it to me. Show it that you will give me one tenth of your treasure in exchange for what I am going to tell you. The shipyard showed that he would. The old woman asked him to swear again who looking at the image of the sacred heart of Jesus. It's a dream in the language of the world. She told him, I can interrupt it. But the interruption is very difficult. That's why I feel that I deserve a part of what you find. And this is my interruption. You must go to the pyramids in Egypt. I have never heard of them, but if it was a child who showed them to you, they exist. There you will find a treasure that will make you a rich man. The boy was surprised and then irritated. He didn't need to seek out the old woman for this. But then he remembered that he wasn't going to have to pay anything. I didn't need to waste my time just for this, he said. I told you that you're the most difficult one. It's the simple thing in life that are the most extraordinary. Only wise men are able to understand them. And since I am not wise, I have had to learn other arts, such as reading of plants. Well, how am I going to get to Egypt? I only interrupt dreams. I don't know how to turn them into reality. That's why I have to live off what my daughters provide me with. And what if I never get to Egypt? Then I don't get 
happened. It wouldn't be the first time. And the woman told the boy to leave, saying she had already wasted too much time with him. So the boy was disappointed. He decided that he would never again believe in dreams. He remembered that he had a number of things he had to take care of. He went to the market for something to eat. He traded his book for one that was thicker and he found a bench in the pig plaza where he could sample the new wine he had bought. The day was hot and the wine was refreshing. The ship were at the gates of the city in a stable that belonged to a friend. The boy knew a lot of new people in the city. That was when what made traveling appeal to him. He always made new friends and he didn't need to spend all of his time with them when someone see the same people every day as had happened with him at the seminary. They wind up becoming a part of the personal life and then they want the person to change. If someone is not what others want them to be, the others become angry. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their life. But known about his or her own, he decided to wait until the sun had sunk a bit lower in the sky before following his flocks back thought the field. Three days from now, he would be with the merchant's daughter. He started to read the book he had bought. On the very first page, it described a burial ceremony and the names of the people involved were very difficult to pronounce. If he ever wrote a book, he thought he would present one person at a time so that the reader wouldn't have to be worried about memorizing a lot of names. When he was finally able to concert it, on what he was reading, he liked the book better. The burial was on a snowy day, and he welcomed the feeling of being cold. As he read on, an old woman shed the wound at his side and tried to strike up a conversation. Between the conversation, what are you doing? The old man asked, pointing at the people in the plaza. Working? The boy answered, dialing, making it look as if he wanted to concentrate on his reading. Actually, he was thinking about sharing his Sheep in front of the Martin daughter so that she could see that he was someone who was 
capable of doing difficult things. He had already imagined this scene many times. Every time the girl became fascinated when he explained that the ship had to be shared from back to front. He also tried to remember some good stories to relate as he shared his ship. Most of them he had read in books, but he would tell them as if they were from his personal experience. She would never know the difference because she didn't know how to read. Meanwhile, the old man persisted in his attempt to strike up a conversation. He said that he was tired, tired and thirsty and asked if he might have a sip of the boy wine. The boy offered his bottle, hoping that the old man would leave him alone. But the old man wanted to talk and he asked the boy what book he was reading. The boy was tempted to be rude and move to another branch. After sitting another branch, but his father had taught him to be respectful of the elderly. So he held out the book to the man for two reasons. First, that he himself wasn't sure how to pronounce the title. And second, that if the old man didn't know how to read, he would probably feel ashamed and decided of his own accord to change pages. Hmm, said the old man, looking at all sides of the book as if it was some strange object. This is an important book, but it's really irritating. The boy was shocked. The old man knew how to read and had already read the book. And if the book was irritating, as the old man had said, the boy still had time to change it for another. It's a book that says the same thing almost all the other books in the world say continue the old man. It describes people's inability to choose their own dest destinies and it ends up saying that everyone believes the world's greatest lie. What's the world's greatest lie? The boy asked, completely surprised. Is this that at a certain point in our lives we lost control of what happening to us and our lives become controlled by faith. That's the world's greatest lie. This never happened to me, the boy said. They wanted me to be a priest, but I decided to become a shipyard. Much better, said the old man, because you really like to travel. He knew what I was thinking, the boy said to himself. The old man, meanwhile, was lifting toward the book without seeming to want to return it at all. The boy noticed that the man's clothing was strange. He looked like an Arab which was not unusual in those parts. Africa was only a few hours from Tarifa, 
one had only to cross the narrow strait by boat arabs often appeared in the city shopping and chatting their strange prayers several times a day where are you from the boy asked from many places no one can be from many places the boy said i am a sheep here and i have been to many places but i come from only one place from a city near an ancient castle that's where i was born well then we could say that i was born in salim the boy didn't know where the salim was but he didn't want to ask fearing that he would appearing ignorant he looked at the people in the plaza for a while they were coming and going and all of them seemed to be very busy so what is the shalim like he asked trying to get some sort of clue it's like is is always has been no clue yet but he knew that shalim wasn't in andalusia if it were he would already have heard of it and what do you do in shalim he insisted what do i do in shalim hmm the old man laughed well i am the king of shalim people say a strange thing the boy thought sometimes it's better to be with the sheep who don't say anything and better still to be alone with one books they tell their incredible stories at the time when you want to hear them but when you are talking to people they say something that are so strange that you don't know how to continue the conversation my name is melchi dek said the old man how many sheep do you have enough said the boy he could see that the old man wanted to know more about his life well then we have got a problem i can't help you if you feel you have got enough sheep the boy was getting irritated he wasn't asking for help it was the old man who had asked for a drink of his wine and had started the conversation give me my book the boy said i have to go and to get on my ship and get going give me one tenth of your ship said the old man and i will tell you how to find the hidden treasure the boy remember his dream and suddenly everything was clear to him the old woman had an charges him in eating but the old man maybe he was her husband was going to find a way to get much more money in exchange for information about something that didn't even exist the old man was probably a grubs grubsy too da boy could say anything before the old man leonard obar picked up a stick and began to write in the sand of the plaza something bright reflected from his chest with such intensity that the boy was momentarily blinded with a 
movement that was too quick for someone his age. The man covered whatever it was with his cap. When his vision returned to normal, the boy was able to read what the old man had written in the sand. There in the sand of the plaza of that small city. The boy read the name of his father and his mother and the name of the seminary, seminary he had attended. He read the name of the merchant daughter which he hadn't even known and he read things he had never told anyone.